2024, I want to encourage you. I believe it is the year of achievement. I believe it is the year of achievement. I want to encourage you. Don't let time pass. Take hold of what God has for you. The things that He has for you to achieve. Don't procrastinate. Don't be lazy. Take hold of it. You know, sometimes people like, well, the new year's coming. I wonder what will happen in the new year. I have my wish list of the things that I'd like to happen. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Take hold of what God has for you. It's time to get up and take hold of what He has for you. This can be for you the year of achievement. And I want to talk about the year of achievement. Romans 13, 11. And do this knowing the time. Now is the high time to awake out of sleep. I want to say to you, I want to say to your spirit, wake up. Wake up. It is time to achieve in the Holy Spirit. It is high time you got up, your spirit got up and you achieved the good things that God has destined for you. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Now is your day. Now is your time. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Put your hand on your chest and say, Soul, now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. I speak to you, soul. Now is the time to get up. Now is the time to awake. God has called you. Now is the time. Wake up, soul, and do the work of God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 34, 26. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Hallelujah. Shanda Maharupa Babakaya. There shall be showers of blessing. Then the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. Can I have my water, please? They shall be safe in their land and they shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bonds of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who have enslaved them. It is your time for blessing. It is your time for the yoke, the bands of yoke to be broken off your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you know, the world strategizes, has goals how to achieve. But in the kingdom of heaven, achievement is by grace. It's God at work in your life such that you get up and move. Hallelujah. It's grace. The important thing about grace is to position yourself, position yourself to receive those showers of blessing. How do we position ourselves that we might break through in life and achieve the things that God has for, you, for us how do we position ourselves? First of all, humble yourself before God. God is favourable to the humble. Humble yourself before Him. If you are trying to achieve in life with your own strength, 
with your own great ideas, with your own effort, with getting other people to counsel you and give you advice and so on and so forth, then God may well hand you over to your natural abilities. But if you position yourself for grace, then you humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm weak. Lord, I'm foolish. I'm sorry, Lord, for what I've done. I trust you. Faith and trust is the excellent place, location to receive grace. As you come into this new year, position yourself before God. Tell him how useless you are, how helpless you are. That's why he promised us a helper, because we need help. I'm telling you, you need help. Ask him for help. Position yourself humbly, repenting of your sin, coming before him, crying out to him, Lord, help me like the blind man. Son of David, have mercy on me. And the Lord Jesus stopped, called him. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, that I may receive my sight according to your faith, be it done to you. The blind man positioned himself for blessing. Put yourself in that position of humility and see what the Lord will do. Just hand yourself over to him. Surrender absolutely to him. Let him be Lord. Stop relying on yourself. Cry out to him. Honour him. The position of honour. We honour him by meditating in his word, by spending time in prayer, then by the way we give. There are many ways of honouring God. God honours those who honour him. Everyone's busy, it seems, these days, unless you're lazy. Everyone's busy. Time is so important. Time is so valuable. Honour him by giving him your time. Position yourself for achievement by honouring God. Hallelujah. Anyone hear what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. When you want to achieve in life, for whom do you want to achieve? Do you want to achieve things for yourself or are you living your life in service to others? Because Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. When you want to achieve, is it for others or for yourself? If you are self-centered, you will not receive grace to achieve. You'll have to do it on your own. But if you want to bless others, if you want to succeed to be a blessing, if you want to be blessed in order to bless others, God will see the condition of your heart and give you an open door. Paul said, For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Because we're not like the world. The world wants to achieve in its ego. I remember talking to someone on a plane and they said, you know, my kids have got the big house and the big mortgage. Like, what does that mean? They got a huge loan, drowning themselves in debt so that they can look good and look like they've achieved. That's what the world does. But we want to achieve in Jesus. Amen. If you want to achieve, you need to deal. See, achievement is in the spiritual realm. If you want to achieve in the kingdom of heaven, it's a spiritual thing. You need to deal with the things that are hindering 
your ability to achieve. The main thing that hinders us is sin. Hosea 10, 12 says, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. You have ploughed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way, in the multitude of your mighty men. So break up your fallow ground. Repent. Turn to the Lord. Break the hindrance of sin in your life. And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you, make you righteous so that you will come under The blessing of God. Now, some people have demon hindrances in their life. You not only need repentance, perhaps, but you also, some people think, if I just repent, I'll be free. But if you have a demonic problem, you also need deliverance. Now, God is sovereign. You might repent and he'll just come and deliver you. Hallelujah. But some people have demons and the demons are causing your life to be hindered. You never achieve anything. It's always one step forward, two steps back. Relationships go down the toilet. All sorts of things go wrong in your life. You need deliverance. Praise God. So the blessing that you want to achieve in the kingdom comes through absolute obedience to the word of God. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently, everyone say diligently, obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the country, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flocks, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, blessed shall you be when you come in, blessed shall you be when you go out. So you come into your house, you say, I'm blessed. You go out of your house, you say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee seven ways. Because when you obey the Lord, you place yourself under blessing. So important. Just obey the word of God. Simple things. You know, I just thank God for the Holy Spirit. He is the most wonderful teacher. You know, much of my life I wanted to be mentored by someone. And the Lord said to me that the Holy Spirit is your teacher. And um, I was um, in the States and I was in a hotel room And there was a Salvation Army thrift shop across the road. Well, I'd come to to, to Canada and to Calgary in, when was it, October. And we had almost like 8 inches, 12 inches of snow. So we came prepared for the winter. So I thought, I'm I'm going down to the Caribbeans down south. It's so hot. I'll get some T-shirts from the thrift shop. So I walk into the thrift shop and I'm looking at the T-shirts because I'm preparing for the hot weather. And, you know, they're second-hand shirts. And the Lord says to me, Mark, do you know who's worn these T-shirts? Alcoholics, drug addicts. What type of people have worn? Now, Now, you go into a thrift shop And everything's washed and clean, right? But the Lord's saying to me, do you know if they are spiritually soiled, if they are contaminated, 
And what are you going to dress yourself in? I walked out of that thrift shop. The Lord saved me from contaminating myself. I heard the story of a man of God who went to a hotel and the Lord said to him that the bed is contaminated by, by sex. So he slept on the floor. He saved himself. Some of you might think I'm stupid. But that's all right. You won't be the only one. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is the most wonderful teacher. Hallelujah. Just listen to him. Be led by the Holy Spirit. And it will keep your life from a whole lot of problems. Hallelujah. So in this year of achievement, take hold of the opportune time that God gives you. Today will never come again. 2024, once it's over, it's over. Achieve the things that God has for you today. You know, the blind man who came to Jesus, it was God's time for him to be healed. If Jesus missed it, that miracle may not have happened the day after. Know God's timing. His time is now. Don't procrastinate. Now, some of you, you need to move on. When I was 17, the Lord called me. He said to me, 1 Peter 5.2. I looked it up and it said, Tend the flock of God that is your charge. I knew that God had called me to be a pastor. But around 2009, I felt the anointing beginning to lift to pastor. The season of the call was coming to an end. And God was shifting me into a new season from being a pastor to an apostolic ministry where we travelled. I no longer have a physical church that I pastor. The season had come to an end. Some of you are hanging on to the old season. You need to move into the new season because the anointing is no longer on the old season that God called you to. The anointing has moved. I knew in myself that when I was pastoring that the anointing was moving from that season to another season. Hallelujah. Don't hold on to the old. Move on to the new season that God has for you. Praise God. Isaiah 28. Now listen to this. Give ear and hear my voice, Isaiah says. Listen and hear my speech. Does the ploughman keep ploughing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? When he has levelled its surface, does its surface does not does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin, plant the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place and the spelt in its place? What Isaiah is saying, a farmer doesn't plough endlessly. He also sows. There is a time to plough, but some of you need to move on to planting to sowing. There's a season for ploughing, but you need to move on to your new season. There is anointing, a blessing upon ploughing, but don't get stuck when God has moved on. Hallelujah. You need to be blown by the wind of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 3, Jesus said that those who are born again will be like the wind that blows you. I'm going to invite my friend Joe Lupi, one of our ministers who loves sailing, to talk to us about the wind in the sails. 
Hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, sailing, Mark. Well, sailing's fun most of the time. Can be dangerous too, but you can't go sailing without the wind. And isn't the wind an interesting thing? I've never met a person yet who's seen the wind, but I've met lots of people who have felt the wind. And the wind is very much the picture of the Holy Spirit. Where does the wind come from? Ecclesiastes says. Where does it go? Nobody knows, but it's there. And when you go sailing, I can tell you from experience sailing and racing as well, you spend a lot of time studying where the wind is and what its strength is and where the wind isn't and what direction the wind is blowing. And even while you're sailing, you're constantly studying where's the wind, where's the wind? Because with no wind, you're going nowhere. And that's very much a picture of our lives with the Holy Spirit. Without him, we're going nowhere. And when you're sailing, you've got to prepare your boat and your sails in the optimum way to receive the wind so you can get to your destination quickly. Now, there's other ways you can get there, but they'll take longer. And if you don't set your boat properly for where the wind is blowing, you can end up shipwrecked or going nowhere. So I want to encourage you today that study where the wind is. Where's the Holy Spirit moving? What does he want to do in your life? You know, in the world, we have what's called the trade winds. And these are winds that blow for long periods of time, months in certain directions. In the book of Kings, King Solomon, the trade winds would bring all of the all of the traders and the businessmen of the day right through his port and his lands and water territories. When they came through, they would all stop and unload their treasures on their way through to King Solomon's uh, at his port for his kingdom because the trade winds. And many boats would park up waiting for those winds. And when those winds started off, they'd all go with the trade winds at their back. I just want to declare over your life today, for 2024, may the Holy Spirit blow behind you and fill your sails. And may the Holy Spirit bring to you the treasures of heaven to the port of your house in 2024. May the treasures of heaven be yours. Peace in your house. Love and joy. May they come to your house with the Holy Spirit. And for those in ministry, I want to encourage you, spend some time. What does the Holy Spirit, where is he blowing you in 2024? One of the great men of God said later in his life and a long ministry career, he would pray every week to the Holy Spirit that he would not start anything. He would not set out on a sailing ship until the Holy Spirit told him exactly where to go and what to do. In other words, he was tuned, finely tuned to the wind of the Holy Spirit. Back to you, Mark. God bless you, everybody. Love you. Love you all. May you have a joy-filled New Year, Joe. So, I prophesy, you shall achieve this year. You shall achieve this year. I prophesy. People who have been hindered in their life, hindered relationships, finances, schooling, housing, I prophesy you shall move forward this year. You shall achieve. Surely the glory of God shall come upon you and lift you up out of your swamp, out of your mire, in Jesus' name. Surely he shall lift you up. Surely he shall build you and edify you and strengthen you and cause your enemies to flee. I speak to those who are hearing my voice. I speak 
to the demonic darkness, the terrors of the night, the nightmares, the things, the demonic things that have held you back and hindered your life. I speak to you in Jesus' name. I command that darkness to come out of your mind, come out of your brain. I command that darkness, come out now. I command that snake, come out of your abdomen. I command, I command that spinal degeneration, be loose from you. I command that cancer in the lower back, come out, come out. Come out, I command those kidneys, be whole in Jesus' name. I command those throbbing headaches, migraines, sinus problems to be healed in Jesus' name. I command that anger in your marriage to cease now in Jesus' name. I command that misunderstanding to cease now. Hallelujah. I command that sexual addiction, that masturbation, that pornography, that lust, the spirit of lust, cease now in Jesus' name and be free. I command that seductive spirit to leave your life in Jesus' name, never to return. I'm speaking to that young man, that 17-year-old, about your studies and your future, I say prosper, be successful, graduate and do well. I speak to that person. You're thinking about starting, you're a young person, young man, you're thinking about starting a business. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, I ask, make a way, open the way for that person. I thank you for your blessing upon that business. I thank you for the finance, for clients, partners, everything. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that everyone listening right now for achievement, achievement, that everything that has hindered them, that they move forward right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see the wind of God blowing in your sails. I see the wind of God blowing you forward, blowing you forward. Cut the anchors off your boat. Cut the anchors off your boat. Loose yourself to go. Hallelujah. Some of you have got people that you have allowed to hold you back. You have allowed these people to have ungodly control and authority over your life that no man should have because Jesus Christ is Lord. You need to cut yourself off from that control in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are a redeemed, blood-bought child of God, a citizen of heaven. You are no man's slave. I cut you off from ungodly control and influence that you have allowed in your life because you are a people pleaser. It is time to stand up. Stand up and be a God pleaser. Take a stand for Jesus Christ. Pick up your cross and walk. Hallelujah. That's the power of God. Power of God. Someone with a neck problem being healed right now. Someone with um, nerve damage in their ear is being healed right now. Tumour in the ear being healed right now. I'm asking the Lord for this young lady and she's thinking about this relationship with this man. She's confused. She's confused. I ask, Lord, that you straighten it all out, that all confusion goes in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that she would understand your will, Your will. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I pray for that autistic child in the room right now. That autistic child. Be healed. That marriage problem. I'm speaking to you. You're sitting with your spouse and you're thinking, is he talking about me? I'm talking to you in the Holy Spirit. Stop arguing. Cease your anger. Stop blaming one another. 
kick out the spirit of accusation and have peace. For God has called us to peace. I speak healing, the blood, the anointing over your marriage in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord